Hey, what's up everyone? This is Phantom Phoenix from Dark Sparks Gaming. Welcome to today's video and we're going to be going over all of the aspects to becoming a master sword user in Smash Bros Ultimate. Playing a sword character means you're carrying your own playstyle along with it. So you're going to have to develop that playstyle, which I'll help you with in this video. And we're going to go over some properties of swords, how you want to zone and how you want to pressure with swords. So without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> Before we go into playstyles and different ways of using swords, I first want to go over the attributes of swords and how they inherently function in Smash Brothers. So think of swords as an extension of the character's arm that is completely invincible. So basically a longer arm that's completely invincible and when you use this move, you're not going to take damage if someone hits the sword. This functions for all sword characters, so you want to know this so that way you can take advantage of this when learning how to zone and pressure with that, which we'll go into a little bit later. And some people also forget that certain characters have this property on certain moves as well, with the big one being Banjo-Kazooie, where Kazooie, the bird that Banjo swings, is actually technically a sword because you cannot hit Kazooie and deal damage to the entire character. So Kazooie functions basically as a sword. Wrapping up this section of the video, I want to show some hitbox and hurtbox visualization so you all can see exactly how a sword functions and how much range you have with a sword that you can definitely use to your advantage for shield poking, pressuring, zoning, edge guarding. There's so many different uses for swords and this is why sword characters have generally been very good in Super Smash Bros for the most part and it's simply because of the many advantages that a sword carries along with it. Okay, so we went over basically how a sword functions. Let's go over some applications and some different uses on how to use a sword to your advantage. First being that of zoning. Zoning is a monumental part of playing a sword character because depending upon the matchup you're playing in, you can use that sword so that way your opponent has to work around it. And this is a topic that I've also gone over in my How to Beat Peach video, which if you guys want to see that, an eye card to that will be in the top right hand corner. But basically as a sword character, there's multiple different play styles, but the main one you want to use with zoning with your sword is that you have to make your opponent work around your sword. Make them have a struggle when going around your sword. Think of your sword as an obstacle course in which your opponent has to maneuver through to finally get to your body and hit you. So basically what you want to do is area denial. Put out that move and say, okay, opponent, work around this and try to get to your body. But even if they do get to your body, this is when defensive play with your sword becomes important because there's really two types of play styles that go under the defensive category. There's really hand-to-hand -hand combat and then when someone's up and on you. Now certain sword fighters excel at this better than others, whereas you have characters like Roy or Krom who are a little bit better with close-in combat with your sword. And then you have characters like Lucina, Marth, and Cloud who can space with their swords very well and they have their moves that work really well in the spacing swordy type playstyle. Zoning with a sword character is fundamentally different than a character who has projectiles or has other moves in their arsenal that don't have the invincibility that a sword does. You can use your sword to go through certain moves and just outright prioritize against it. And this is one of the keys that really makes zoning with a sword just so much better in so many different scenarios unless you're playing against a character who cannot close in whatsoever and you have that projectile, yeah that's all the more better. For instance characters like Cloud or Corrin have projectiles in their arsenal where they can use for their advantage and they also possess swords. So with this sword type playstyle you want to be able to use it to poke shields and you also want to be able to use it to go through moves outright. So what I mean by this is the sword's priority function. Basically, since swords are invincible, and if you were to use a move with a sword against a move that's not a sword, like for instance, we have Luigi's forward smash and then we have Lucina's forward smash. Well, Lucina's forward smash has more range and the actual sword is invincible. So therefore, if the sword is used at the right spacing with the right timing and all that factored in, Lucina or really any other sword user can land that forward smash and be completely carefree and not be phased whatsoever. Now that we've gone over all zoning principles with swords, let's now move on to pressuring and then a little bit of shield poking with swords. We want to be able to use this sword in two different scenarios, zoning, pressuring, and then of course we'll eventually get to edge guarding and killing with swords, but that's going to be in the latter half of the video. 
Okay, now we're gonna talk about pressuring with swords. Pressuring with swords is not as hard as you think it is if you're very used to the zoning playstyle with swords. Because I know there's a lot of people out there who are very used to the zoning playstyle with swords, and that's okay. But there's really different adaptations of different sword characters that are better at certain stuff that I already explained earlier. But we're gonna be going over on how to do this with all sword characters. So first things first, you want to know that Shields are your best friends. You eat shields breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The reason why I say that is because you want to be able to work around this, especially if you play characters like Marco Gusina who have that shield breaker capability. Same thing goes for Roy and Krom. They can deal some heavy shield damage if you play them correctly. Know the moves that deal the most shield damage, like for instance side B, the angled side B with um, the little three stabs at the end, the green one, I forgot the exact name of that one is. Or if you have Shield Breaker or any moves like Roy's forward smash, Crom's forward smash, those can deal some insane shield damage. So what you want to do is, is force your opponent into shield. Forcing your opponent into shield can be great because if they're in shield, then they have to use either out of shield options to beat your sword, in which in most scenarios they won't, or your opponent is going to go for a defensive option like a spot dodge or roll or maybe even a jump. And this is where you can bait these options. So the thing about swords is that you can dictate play and which is really good with pressuring with swords and this is part of a play style that you can adapt is if you're able to dictate your opponent and basically force them to do certain stuff this is kind of what i got went over in my zoning video but it applies to swords as well if you force your opponent to do something that you want them to do beta option frame trap them you get them into the scenario you want that's where you can land kills an example of this could be like cloud or roy if you're playing against a character who is not very good in the air or when they're being juggled this can be like snake for example if you're using those up tilts and those up airs to keep Snake in the air, he's going to have trouble landing and this is where you can force options. With Snake, it could be a B reverse, it could be an air dodge, it could be all sorts of things or maybe they'll even use their up B to get height and then land on a platform. You force options out of them and make them work around you. Now that you know the foundation of pressuring your opponent with a sword, now we're going to go into edge guarding. Edge guarding with the sword and pressure basically come hand in hand because as we spoke earlier, we want to be able to bait options and also just take up space. Swords take up space on stage and off stage. And off stage and on stage can flip the switch just like that with the snap of your fingers. So the thing about it with a sword character is that when you're off stage, this sword that you use has many advantages because you can cover multiple options with it depending on what move you're using. Edge guarding is where character awareness comes into play. If you know which moves are great for which scenarios and knowing how to use them to edge guarding, sword play is just so, so easy. Most sword characters have counters, you can use those to edge guard. Most sword characters have extremely good forward airs that send at really weird angles and which will cover most ledge grabbing options. It's just so easy once you understand, okay, if I throw this person at this angle, my forward air will launch at this angle, so therefore use that offstage to counter your opponent's recovery options. Lastly, I quickly want to go over molding your playstyle with your sword character. This is a paramount part to playing your main in general in Super Smash Bros. But it's really key with sword characters because each one of them in Super Smash Bros., whether they seem like clones or echo fighters, have unique ways of playing them and you can make your own little variations to them. So first I want to go over the different archetypes of sword characters. You have characters like Lucina who are kind of zoners pretty much and they also have their little nuances where they can poke through platforms a little bit better than other sword characters. You can also put Marth in that category as well. When it comes to your up close and personal, you have your Roy's, your Crom's. Those are your characters that you want to use that are a little bit better when it comes to rushdown type playstyle. So if you play a character like Captain Falcon, this becomes a little bit easier. The last two playstyles or archetypes are dynamic and your hybrid. So dynamic playstyles or dynamic characters would be someone like Shulk or Cloud where their stats base stats or different attributes they have to their moveset completely change throughout the course of a match. And hybrid characters are the characters that are a mix between sword attributes and they have some zoning capabilities or something else that makes them not necessarily in one area or the other, but more so in a gray area. This could be Robin or Banjo-Kazooie, for example. 
Whereas Banjo has a lot of moves with Kazooie that are straight up sword, but also has his eggs and grenades that are great zoning tools. Choosing your playstyle really comes down to what you want in a character. Do you want to be able to do everything like a dynamic character such as Shulk, where you can deal lots of damage in a certain amount of art, have crazy high jump ability, be able to run super fast for short amount of time, or do you want to be an all-arounder? Do you want people to be good at everything, but not too good in one area? That would be a character like Lucina or Marth. Or do you want to be straight up in that person's face? Do you want to be able to go from zero to death sometimes with certain combos, have that high damage output, and get that really hard read that feels really rewarding, then Roy or Krom would be a better character for you. With all of those specifics laid out, just understand one thing. As a sword character, you want to be able to control the pace of the game. Don't let your opponent control the pace of the game, you control the pace of the game. Understand that one tip, and everything else will just come naturally. Okay everyone, that's all I have for today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, share, or subscribe. At the time I'm recording this video, I'm currently at 996 subscribers, I believe. It's, I think it's 996. Anyways, we're like four or five away more from the thousand subscriber mark, in which a channel update will be coming out soon for all of you who are interested in that. And also I'm gonna be doing some viewer requested videos. I'll probably do around two to three of those since you know it's a thousand subscribers. This is a really big milestone. And this is just the beginning everyone so hopefully we can get this channel to grow a lot more and I have a lot of ideas and videos and subjects that I want to cover for the future of this channel and now that I have a bigger fan base doing these types of videos will garner a lot more attention anyways people my name is Phantom Phoenix and I'll see you all next time on Dark Sparks Gaming